two, one. Hi, this is Jim T. Chong, The Walk Star, and I am very excited to be hosting, of course, what we call The Power of Jim, and we have the co-host, Mr. Jim Meyer, who is a real estate broker associate. Jim Meyer, take it away. Oh, thank you very much, Jim, and uh, Jim T. Chong is a financial expert. Uh, if you've got money, you want to hold on to that money, talk to Jim. If you want to publicize yourself, especially if you want to do a kind of a show like we're doing right now, Jim is going to give you tips and tricks on how to do it right, how to get you guys out there. Uh, the first thing he would tell you, if you're me, you should have more light on yourself. But trust me, <laughs> I'm looking at myself right now, and this is all you really want to see. So bottom line is we have an exciting, exciting guest here that we've been trying to get her for two weeks right now and she's been extremely busy so this is a, a, a thrilling episode and I hope you guys are going to watch every minute of it uh, and then type questions because the next time we have her on we'll probably uh, include your questions. Uh, Jim who do we have on the show tonight? You know um, we actually have a great person here and her role is so important to the city. She is a councilwoman from Fairfield, and she is uh, an outstanding person. She is a pretty much say it as you see it type of person, and her name, Jim, is Catherine Moy. Catherine Moy. Hey. Hey. So, hey. thank you so much for your time. Uh, you know, um, you know, I, I met you through uh, Jim uh, Meyer, of course, and yes. you play a very important role. Um, I'm working on some things also uh, with uh, some other uh, delegates in some different cities. Uh, yeah. Mayor of Elk Grove, by the way, is Steve Lee. Uh, yeah. Him and I have something in common. We're both Asian, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you are also Asian along with Jim. You guys are cock Asian, right? Yeah. Yes, we so, are. <laughs> so we're all, we're all uh, one world. We are the world. <laughs> yes, we are. We are the world. Now, you know, one of the things uh, is pretty interesting. You live in the county there and, and Jim, you know, what, what is happening in Solano County right now? Of course, uh, you know, we have the thing dealing with the COVID-19 uh, COVID or the yes. coronavirus that we will be addressing. But uh, what are the things that the way you see them right now, Jim? Uh, well, me being a licensed realtor, I'm very concerned with uh, my clients uh, being able to close transactions. We have several transactions in contract right now and one of them is dealing with a private money or what you would call a hard money loan and that lender is actually backing out because they don't want to risk their their cash um the other deals that we have going uh everything seems to be just fine we're trying to get things closed before the government says that we can't do it for some reason um, so what I'm seeing is the title companies are still open, the lenders are still open, um, the, we have uh, some clients who just signed docs today and we are working on closing uh, multiple deals next week. So, so far uh, things are go doing good. We've had people go out and do roof work and uh, termite work and nobody has said, okay, we cannot do this stuff. Uh, so everything seems to be going according to schedule, but nobody's calling me saying, Jim, I want to get inside that house, look at it, and let's write an offer on it. So that has slowed down to a screeching halt. Uh, Catherine, I'm sure you can tell us much more. You've got a bigger view of this county than I do. What, what are you seeing? So um, what I'm seeing right now is something that I've never uh, seen before in my young life. Um, and uh, it's serious. People are scared. Literally, some of them are scared to death. Um, I have had mothers call me literally in tears. And um, so it's been very stressful. But I encourage people to continue doing the things like continue to close on their homes. Um, and, and going to the grocery store and staying six feet away you know, and trying to do those things. Here in Fairfield, in Solano County, we are not really stuck in our homes. Um, we are supposed to stay here as much as we can, but we can still go to a store and stay six feet away from somebody. We can go to the park, same thing. And I try to encourage people about that, but there is real fear that just in 24 hours, 
I'm feeling less fear. So that's a good thing. You know, one of the things I want to ask you, what, what encouraged you to run for councilwoman there? What do you see as the strengths of the area, the whole county there? Well, um, I was born and raised here in the Fairfield and Fairfield area out in Gordon Valley. I grew up um, and the strengths here is that we have a very diverse, one of the most diverse in the entire country um, population. What's good about that? We bring all kinds of things. We have the best food here. Um, we have different ideas and thinking, but we're also very, very loving. I see people very loving here, and that might be one of the hardest things for me. I'm a hugger, so I have to stay away from people. And um, but no I hugs during this time, right? No hugs. Right. No hugs. You are lucky because I can't get you. You see, <laughs> um, or I would hug both of you, Jim. Um, but. Aww. Uh, the thing is, is that uh, the Solano County was the last of the Bay Area um, counties to put in an order, and people were just fearful because we are also the first county that we had community contagion. In other words, somebody caught it from somebody else. So that's where we are. You so, know, with but, um, I'm sorry, okay, go ahead, Jay. Right now, my wife uh, has taken little Bella out to the park. There, she's, she's walking our, our little our little dog out there and but when she goes out to um fairfield high you know of course there's nobody out there mm -hmm. and it's kind of nice uh that uh, the two of them get to have some time by their, themselves so um yeah we see that uh things have changed a bit but uh um i'm glad to see Catherine, that you're saying that, that uh the fear is subsiding and hopefully every day it'll get a little less and less and less and within a few weeks, hopefully, we're going to be back to normal. Yes, that's what I'm. That's what I'm banking on. I'm banking on if we can, as they say, flatten the curve. I've been trying to do that my adult life, but anyway, flatten the curve. If we can do that, everyone passes with an A. <laughs> yes, I love it. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. Very good. Yeah. Well, one of the things I, I oh, want. Go I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was We're just so excited. Prediction uh, for, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Jim. A month from now, what what's life like going to be like in Solano County? Yeah. What do I think it's going to be like? Well, I think that all of us are going to know one thing um, for sure: that we have to keep ourselves clean no matter what, our hands and everything. And I don't think that's going to change. Um, but what I do think will change is the fear level is going to drop way down within a month. And I really do believe that we're going to be almost back to normal. What does that mean? Is it a new normal? Probably a little bit. But um, people will probably continue to go to restaurants and pick it up. That's what we're asking people to do instead of going inside. We can't do that anymore in Solano County. I think that'll start changing in a month. You know, with um, with a lot of things that, that are happening, I, I think it's really important that people keep their heads in all situations. Yes. Um, I personally believe that opportunities like this are opportunities for us to really see you know, how we can better ourselves. You know, what does yeah. this indicate to us? A lot of people are snagging the, the masks. You know, I actually have a mask here. It happens to be yellow, not just because I'm Chinese, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but you know, the whole thing is, is that a lot of people are, are really getting more than what they need, which I understand you have to prepare for this time here, but you know, it really, it really does expose a lot about ourselves. Are we thinking about ourselves? Are we thinking about the bigger picture of other people? Um, how can we really work together is what I see in terms of this economy. Social media, we're using the phone now to really connect because we have to more than ever just instead of just doing business. What do you see in terms of the area, how this whole uh, epidemic or pandemic, some people say, how has it affected the area and yourself? Um, personally, I like I said, I... I go out a lot. I'm always out there and always in the middle of everything. And again, always hugging people. I won't hug. Um, you know, that's a lie. I will hug again when, you know, all of this is done, but it has changed. Um, it at first wore me out because I am a very involved uh, leader. I want people to trust me and to know that they can rely on me to give them accurate information and that they can trust me if they have a question and I don't know I say I don't know 
and I'll get it. I don't want any of that to change. But maybe the way they get a hold of me now will more be on this than on the telephone. I already do a lot on social media. Um, but as far as uh, what I believe in people, in Solano County, again, I'm very biased and I'll say it flat out, but people here are doing amazing things for each other, putting um, for some of our elderly friends and neighbors, putting baskets of things in front of their home. Um, that they might need toilet paper, you know, that kind of stuff. Everybody's about nice. toilet paper, right? Yeah. That's not going to change. We need to hear more. We need to hear more about that. I think that when we see or hear about somebody doing something like that, yes. we should really be highlighting that sort of stuff. I agree. Um, the other day, every night I try to end my evening on posting on social media about something that's nice that's happened. And um, the other day I posted this thing about a new friend resident here in Fairfield just moved in and she got married and she took all of her flowers to her new neighbors and put them on their doorstep without saying anything. So they woke up and then we had all this explosion on social media about, look at these beautiful flowers. Well, it turns out, you know, she didn't want to take credit for it or anything, but people were just saying, should I touch them? It's kind of, you know, scary. So she admitted that she was a bride and that she had put them out to make people happy. There you go. It that happens nice. every day. Well, that's very nice. Now, Catherine, um, what, uh, let's go uh, to something a little less uh, jovial. There's yes. a lot of homeless out there. Yes. Uh, what is the county doing or any, are they doing anything? Yes. Um, in conjunction with the homeless and the virus. Yes. Um, so first of all, let me just talk about uh, Fairfield, and it's also happening throughout Solano County. So I am a homeless advocate. I work with uh, people who are homeless and try one-on-one -on -one to help them. I used to run a shelter, just in some background, for women and children here in town. Um, so uh, my heart is there to help these people who want to be helped. Um, what our teams are doing in Solano County are going out to the um, places where they live, uh, which are encampments usually, and um, asking them to come in. And we're taking them into different shelters around, okay? And if we need to, we'll uh, get motels and um, put them in there too and isolate if they can. The problem is many of these people are drug addicted and or are mentally ill. That's the truth. And I know some people don't like to hear it, but it is. I love them. I work with them. I get it. So they refuse the help. This is dangerous for all of us, but we are putting the extra pressure on them right now. Well, that's good. And um, so as far as like the future and changing the way we yes. work with the homeless, uh, I think you've got some ideas. Uh, and, and we talked earlier uh, before we started the, the broadcast about how you don't, you're not woke, you're not trying to be politically correct, but you, you love the homeless, you care about them. What would, if you were in charge, say if you were Gavin Newsom, yes. what would you do for the homeless? Okay, so I would take a lot of the one term, we have right now a budget surplus, believe it or not, that may be sucked away pretty well in this, but uh, there are uh, millions and millions of dollars sitting there. I think a good use of those is to go ahead in communities and build um, community um, mental wards, mental hospitals, actually mental communities where we have them locked in and they come in and they live in their own little pods and give them, you know, uh, some of that freedom, but also treating them if we have to mandatorily this is this is something that went off the skids a long time ago and the feds lied to us and the state said but here's where we are these people need to be forced into treatment and we need to also lighten up on some hipaa laws because there are a lot of families who want to help adults who are out there but they can't because of this block on the HIPAA laws. Now, I'm not saying tell you everything about what's going on with somebody, you know, in their health, but we need to get them off the streets. They are um, doing a lot of damage to our environment. Um, they're doing a lot of damage to each other. And in this coronavirus, there's a lot of damage going on there. So I think it's something that we have to force upon them. We need um, the people at the state and the federal level to grow a backbone 
and go ahead and put that money in. And I sign Solano County up right now to be the first to do it. And we will all get behind it right here. Very good. Yeah. You know, if someone is not a danger to themselves or right. others, uh, they can sue us for yes. taking them off the street and giving them the medication they want. That, they could right. sue the community for $10 million. Am I right? That's right. Um, if they are not a danger to themselves or others, therein is the, uh, the big question. Police, because they are very much about protecting people's civil rights, no matter what anybody says, they are very careful about doing a hold, a 5150 on somebody and taking away those civil rights. But people in the area of psychiatry are much more uh, quick, I would say, to say that person is a danger to themselves. And I think we need to look a lot closer at that. And so we need to bring that together so our police can help us. But if they're not hurting themselves, I'm not about putting them in, you know, locking them up somewhere. That's not me. What I'm saying is people who are hurting themselves or others, and they're doing it every day. We had a, a woman, actually now two, a woman died in an encampment um, about uh, eight days ago here in Fairfield. She was pregnant and she bled to death because she miscarried. So um, we can't have that. You know, she's hurt herself and, and um, her, her baby. Child. Yeah. And so, so you're saying that, that maybe the 5150 um, diagnosis should be a little bit broader. Yeah, not, yes, it's, it's, a, it's a part of the penal code and it needs to be agreed upon um, with uh, law enforcement and with the medical community, the people who actually know, uh, uh, you know, psychiatrically, whether these people are going to hurt themselves. They do it every day. Um, it, is, it is so sad, it's unbelievable. It breaks my heart. So we need some sweeping changes, basically. We do need sweeping changes. So we need, we need elected officials and we need citizens to stand up and say, no more, okay? No more. This is well, insane. Maybe, maybe a statewide ballot initiative started by Catherine Moy. I bet you you could write the initiative. I, I, I am looking actually at that. I'm not at the... Um, I'm not ready to unloose shit on us because you only have a certain amount of time to collect. Um, but I'm working with some people. I really want it to change. And I've been talking to people in the, the mental health community about well, this. When it's important. Unleash, when you unleash it, will you come on our show? I will come, I'll break it right here. Okay. You do All that right. Too. We heard it. She's yeah. going to be doing this yes, right yes. here on the yeah. cover of Jim's show. That's, that's it. Hey, that's you know, right. You know, um, like uh, not being familiar with that general area in the Fairfield, Phil, Solano County myself, yeah. where is everyone in terms of the initiative of what you're trying to accomplish? Is it a popular one? Is it not so popular in terms of your solutions and so forth? It's becoming more popular as people face to face with this kind of thing. We've had two pregnant women in the last six months. Um, give birth or die on the streets um, because they're mentally ill. And um, they're probably pregnant. I hate to say this because I dealt with women. They were probably raped, okay? And um, so there's a lot they're dealing with. And these have both been public cases. We also have a, a gentleman in Vacaville who has no eyes. He has, um, he's broken. He was in a bad motorcycle accident. He lives on the streets and the authorities won't put him into a hold for his family to take over conservatorship because he keeps saying, I can do it myself. Well, he's been hit by a car twice in Vacaville. Right now he's just gone through surgery again yesterday. This is, it's, it's just, it's, it's outrageous. And so, yes, people are more with me on this, maybe even more than six months ago. I know because they're telling me whatever, what does it take without violating people's real civil rights? You don't want to do that. I'm really all about our civil rights, but the inhumanity must stop. You know, this is homelessness is a, a big uh, issue yeah. amongst a lot of places, you know? Um, yes. And, you know, 
definitely if you feel it's appropriate and when when the time is right i would love yeah. to be able to help along with uh jim meyer i think you would agree you know uh use the power of jim to help get the word out and just even bring just facilitate it on here and we could just talk about the pros and cons because it is a big deal you know and Catherine, uh, a lot of people are probably watching this right now and they're saying, oh my God, this woman is saying what I've been thinking my whole life. How can I help her? So if yeah. somebody wants to get a hold of you, what's the best way to reach you? Okay, the best way to reach me, you can go to my Facebook. You can directly call me. Um, do you want me to give my phone number? Go sure, for it. you can do that. Okay, it's 707-639-0. 500. My personal email is cat, as in the animal, catmoy at ymail.com. And I want to hear from you. If you oppose this, you have other ideas, I'm all, I'm all open. I'm all ears. And I'm driving down this road, and I'm going to do something. I'm doing right. it. See, nobody out there wants to see a bunch of tents where <laughs> people are suffering and uh, spreading diseases and getting raped, et cetera. Every, any, everybody's compassionate. They have different ideas on what is right and what's wrong to, to do. But I've got to feel you're, you're the type of person who listens to everybody. I and do. Once you, uh, something smart, something common sense on the ballot, I'm thinking it would pass brilliantly as long as it's not sponsored by some crazy special interest group that's trying to you know get something yeah. going so if no. you're in charge i could see it being a huge success i just appreciate you guys offering because i know you guys have a lot of connections a lot of brilliance in places that i don't um i'm not you know I, i'm just a um i've got a lot of uh I don't know. I'm super powered. I kind of get really excited about things, especially when it's about human beings. You're right. People are losing their businesses. They're picking up their businesses out of Solana County and elsewhere. I'm just saying, I'm not dealing with it. These people are out here, you know, going to the bathroom in front of my place. A doctor in town has to go and clean up every day before he can open his office. Yeah. And it, it was like dying. What, what, how many how many years back would we have to go to, to say everything was okay? Uh, and, and you'd see something like this in the big city, Oakland, San Francisco, whatever. But it's, it's been not that long that it's gotten this, this bad in Fairfield and the surrounding area. That's correct. Um, it was not this bad. I was looking back. Now, this is a little bit further. 20 years ago, um, I was a reporter with the Daily Republic. I spent 20 years as a journalist did a lot of investigative journalism. Um, but at that time, I picked up a newspaper from 20 years ago, and it showed like the first homeless people in Fairfield, a woman and a child. That was the face at the time. Not anymore, okay? We still have them. You don't see it. Uh, Solano County has 500 children who are not in homes. Um, they sleep in cars. They sleep in somebody's couch if they're lucky. And um, they sleep in bushes a lot of times. And they don't go to school. And those are the people, the most innocent. And that's it's just not acceptable. We're richer than that. We need to, as a community, and I mean not just rich in money. I mean rich in love, caring, and people want to do something. We just need to tell them what to, be, what to do. That's all. You give them a clear way. That's how you lead, and wham, they're right there. This, Absolutely. Yeah. this county will do it. This county right. will lead. Yeah, no, my, my wife is a teacher in Vacaville, and she's got yes. students who live in motels. And, uh, and then they, they have to go to school for their meals. Yeah. Uh, and, and so as a community, we're feeding the kids, uh, and, but uh, they have no real home. And um, so, I, you know, together with the using uh, the power of Catherine and the power of Jim, we should be able to come up with something pretty, pretty cool to take care of this problem. Because if, if it starts with us and if, if we let it go and think somebody else is going to take care of the problem, then, yeah, somebody's going to come up with something and it's going to be a big tax on something 
the tax money will go to the uh, the budget surplus and nothing will really happen. So it's, it's it cool. It can't that be that, like that. Yeah. There's money sitting there. I know because I look at budgets too for a living. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and that's fun because whenever anybody, any politician talks about this, they always pretend there is no money and a new tax must be raised. That new money comes in and where does it go? It gets wasted. So I'm glad yeah. that uh, Catherine, you're honest and yeah. you're telling people what they need to know. There is a ton of money out there right. and it is being squandered. It is. You know, you know, touching upon uh, some of the things that you had mentioned here, you know, I know uh, in Elk Grove, you know, there are some things that, that I, I get a chance to talk to uh, the, the mayor, Steve Lee, up here. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, even in uh, Stockton, there are some things out there in San Joaquin County that are happening. You are a very personable person. I can absolutely tell. Um, yeah. Like Mayor Lee, I love the fact that you like to be uh, uh, accessible. You know what yeah. I mean? Sounds like you're really in tune with what's going on. And my question with uh, what is happening here, you know, I know leadership, you know, we kind of alluded to it. It's very key. How do you feel that leadership plays a role in terms of what you're doing right now? Of course, you're a councilwoman. You right. have a figurehead that you represent. Yes. Why is leadership so important and how can it really be uh, implemented in this time more specifically? Right. Um, Leadership to me means uh, actually um, doing everything you can to allow people to um, connect with you. I've worked a long time doing this now. I've, I was appointed in 2008 when two of our city council members were dead. They uh, One killed himself and one was murdered. And I stepped up and left my work as a journalist to do this. Um, you have to be selfless and you have to be open to everybody's ideas. You have to show them. And I tell people, I love you because I do. I'm, I, I, I truly in here love people. And that's where my leadership comes from. My leadership comes from, I get a call in the middle of the night and somebody doesn't have something or need, I'll go. Not right now, we ask not to, but if it was an emergency, I sure would. But the bottom line is what we had a gap here in Solano County, as I mentioned, we didn't have an order here to shelter in place or shelter in home, which I like better. Um, and so I started pressing. Um, and what I mean is I called other politicians and said, come on now, the, the council, uh, the, the head of the board of supervisors, a long time friend, I called her, I, you know, just communicated with her. And then I just directly went to the health officer who makes the call and said, you need to do this. If you don't, Fairfield's going to lead. I'm going to pull us ahead and our city's going to sit like this. And then the other cities around us are going to say what? So let's put it all together and do it. Within 24 hours, they had it. That leadership came from people crying to me and telling me they're scared and they wanted something. I got it for them. That's how you do it. You keep on, you keep the pressure on and you're not afraid. You can't be afraid. If, if it's a mistake, then you can say, I messed up. I'm sorry. I don't think I messed up this time. We'll see. You know, it's kind of like Montel yeah. Jordan says, you know, this is how we do it. You know, anyway, I'm sorry, being Asian, part of that music karaoke gets, gets in my blood there. <laughs> I want to do but, karaoke with you. You know, but but in all sincerity, Jim, uh, you know, you see a lot of things of what she's being said, uh, and you, you're obviously more connected, living directly in Fairfield as well, what she's talking about. You know, any comment uh, uh, from you, I know you have a very serious interest in that area because you're there, so any other things that you want to pull across regarding homelessness? Um, well, I'm still uh, thinking about uh, coming up with an initiative to make it so that you're not allowed to sing on this show anymore, Jim. Um, <laughs> that won't happen. That's part of the culture, right? <laughs> as, well, what I've heard is... That's almost uh, like taking away, uh, uh, what, what, baseball, baseball away from American society. We would never do anything like that or try to ban baseball. Okay, you're right. That in, in taking karaoke away from you, I guess. No, but if you look at historically, actually, that's kind of been done. So 
Anything oh. can happen. Okay, so my research tells me, and I could be wrong, is that, and Catherine, tell me if I'm crazy, uh, they say that we would have to build 8 million units in uh, living units in California for the prices to start going down and for everybody to have a place to live. Um, and, you know, everybody talks about homelessness and they talk about uh, the high cost of rent. So rent is way too high. It doesn't make sense for the rent to be so much higher than your mortgage payment. So, yeah. um, I mean, we have a very, very low mortgage payment compared to what it would cost to rent the house that we own. And it's, it's not fair that so many people have to pay $2,500 for something that was $1,500 a few years ago. So uh, I would say that we need to fast track building more uh, inexpensive housing. It doesn't have to be government housing, but uh, get maybe giving people tax breaks or some sort of tax incentives to be able to uh, to refurbish their homes. And then, you know, we have a high capital gains tax on the federal level yeah. and on the state level. And if people were motivated, they would start uh, revitalizing some of the, the units that are not livable right now. And we, the crisis through, uh, you know, natural, uh, you know, the, the economy would bring these, these uh, rent prices down. And the rent prices go down, uh, I think things are going to change. I not agree. Crazy? No, you're not crazy. Um, we do have a housing shortage. I don't know if the numbers are right. Sometimes I think they're overinflated, um, the numbers. But I know this for sure. Um, that I don't, I disagree with people say that overall, that's why we're having um, the crisis that we're having in homelessness. It is to a point. Most of it is because people are mentally ill and addicted and it's not okay. Some people really think that as long as we have enough housing units, we can just put them in there and everything's going to be okay. No. Would you put somebody who's very, very sick, mentally sick, just put them in a house and say, there you go. It's all better now. No. Um, but we do need places for them. And I've looked at Hawaii. There's a, a, a fellow there and um, he's a big businessman and he built a village and people are staying there for about nine, uh, 90 days maybe six months, and he probably will extend it now. And then they learn to live on their own. They take their meds, they do all that, and then he moves them on. That was somebody who, you know, used his own ideas and put it together, much, you know, less expensive. But I right now call on people. If you have rentals, I do. Um, I was lucky. My husband and I worked really hard, and we bought properties in uh, the 80s and early 90s. Right now, I have four homeless women living in one of them. And so, the, you know, they, they all pay some. They all have jobs now. They're doing well. So they're paying rent, and they're building a history for themselves. They take their medicine. It's beautiful. But I know not everybody can afford to do that, but maybe we can afford – you know, I afford to be less wealthy as far as when we're renting stuff out, you know, maybe some of these people who come in here, I'm going to try to fix this up too. And these apartments, they come in, they get sold. And as you know, they up to them and then they, they, they boost the things up and everybody has to leave. That's got to stop. Um, you know, if they're new uh, owners, I understand how it could be expensive you know buying something new right now a new apartment complex but i think we need to think about those things and i'm not about the government forcing it at all i'm not pro-government i am not you'll find out i'm pretty libertarian but i i am all about leaning on people like you and my friends and everybody else saying look if i can have homeless ladies living in there and a social services group comes in and takes care of some of those things why can't you you know? that's, a, that's a great idea, and, and I hope somebody watching this is motivated because there are people, I mean, I've got plenty of clients who own rental units, and sometimes they're wonderful landlords, and sometimes eh, not so much. 
So it's great to hear from you that that you're not saying, oh, somebody should do this. You're saying you're doing it. And anybody who has, there's a lot of people who may have inherited from their grandmother or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, a fourplex or something. And this would be a wonderful project for somebody to, to try to basically change people's lives because you're going to get rich by, say, if you're 30 and you've got a, a fourplex, you're naturally, over the next 30 years, you're going to build a ton of equity. You might as well get rich in spirit at the same time by changing some lives. And I'm going to yeah. guess that out of those four uh, formerly homeless women, they're, they're yeah. not homeless not anymore, homeless anymore. Uh, that, that one of them is probably going to go out and become successful and do the same thing for I'll somebody else. You. And I'll wouldn't that be you. nice if they tell two friends and they tell two friends and so on and so on. It's wonderful. And let me just tell you, this is really funny because, you know, we check in on them. And what we did was, and everybody could do this, just again, contact me and I'll hook you up with the people who bring in social service workers and also a priest or anything else. And they go in regularly and check in and, and work with these people so they don't get off, you know, off somewhere. I have never had a cleaner rental unit in my life. It's always beautiful. They always pay their rent on time. They're trying so hard and I'm proud and anybody can do this. I still pay my mortgage over there with the rental money. Yeah. You know, one thing I I love about you, and again, I have not met you formally, personally. I've had a a few interactions with you just setting up for this interview and it is very clear to me, you are a do it person and you're not just a concept person. Let's talk about this. Jim, let's have another meeting about what we should be doing and let's have another meeting to see if the prior meeting we agree with all the things and say you just do it and that's what I love the fact that you have four women you practically you've helped in a very practical manner they can say hey this is what happened they are they are uh, uh, you know now getting work gainfully you know what sometimes people just need somebody to believe in them at a time when no one does and I love the fact that uh, here in the time here in the county, it sounds like that's what you're able to do. Um, you know, I know, Jim, you know, you deal a lot in real estate. You see what's going on, the ups and downs here. You know, I know you can help people in the real estate market here. And if they want to get involved, that's something they could talk to you about, the practicals. Talk to Jim about how to set it up from a from from the real estate point of view. But, yeah. um, you know, Kat, I, I do have a question for you. Sure. You know, just definitely, um, I would think that we would not be doing uh, the right thing if we didn't just address issues. You, everything that's going on with the coronavirus, you know, just what is your advice to people? And just, 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 there's so much going on. There's so much people, they call it pandemic. Um, there's a lot of things that we've experienced through history, you know, the, the swine flu, other things, the great, uh, you know, the great other prior recession, which we yeah. are in, whether or not we, we believe it or not. But uh, what is your advice to people during this time that we are facing a challenge together? Right. It's always about don't worry yourself to death. Um, And that means that you still need to laugh. Um, If you need to cry, I did it the other night. I even put it up there because I want people to know I bawled uh, for a long time the other night because people were so stressed and crying. And I feel I carry a lot of that with me. But take care of yourself that way. Um, as far as the coronavirus, again, I just tell you what everybody else is, and that is keep those hands clean. You've seen me touch my face a few times. I'll, I'll clean up after this. I have a little runny nose. Um, but, you know, the bottom line is d- this too will change. I'm telling you, in a month, it's going to look very, very different than what we're looking at today. Um, when this comes up, when you put this up and people look at it, we'll always, we'll already be a little bit less afraid than we are today don't be so afraid that um you think that it's this is the end of the world if it is well i wouldn't know um but (laughs) but um in the meantime try to be as happy as you can um read books laugh um karaoke at home uh you know and thank you yes absolutely you go for it jim and um all of those things but trust too that the people who are leading you are doing their very best. 
it's best not to just attack leaders right now. It's, it's easy and fun to poke at them, whatever, but they're humans too. And um, so let's give everybody a little bit of elbow room when it comes to, let's just be nice, you know? Let's give everybody six feet of elbow room. And, uh, yeah, more than that, because yes, <laughs> it's, it's good. Way in the distance, no, no hugs right now. Um, but, but you know, I hope that we learn through this, just the importance of a hug. I hope that we do miss those. I hope we miss that sense of touch, because it's so important with technology we've kind of gotten a little insensitized to the fact that we are insensitive, not really communicating as much as we need to. Kat, you are very much a relational person. Um, I'm going to get some final thoughts from you as well. But before, uh, before we uh, get final thoughts from you, Jim, just wanted to see if there's any, um, any final concluding thoughts you'd like to give here. Well, I think the most important thing is that uh, we really appreciate the fact that Catherine uh, has been on our show. Uh, this is the second one that we've ever shot. Uh, the next one will actually maybe have lights on me. Who knows? Um, and uh, But it's been a big, big thrill. And I would encourage everybody out there to follow Catherine because uh, I, I found out about that uh, pregnant woman dying uh, uh, on the street, basically, from uh, following Catherine. Uh, because I, I, as a realtor, I don't like to read the newspaper because then I have to disclose everything I know. <laughs> and so yeah. uh, or everything I find out. So, but I, I have to see what, uh, if, if, if Catherine's sharing it, then it's extremely important. And I would encourage everybody to keep watching The Power of Jim because we're going to keep talking about things that are important for this community. And I don't think you can go wrong with The Power of Jim. Yeah. That is true. And, uh, you know, Catherine, any final thoughts you have with your community to yeah. people that are listening to this nationwide? Yes. Um, my final thoughts are when this is over with, I want us to look back and know that we were as good as we could be to the next person. I want us to believe in ourselves when the next one comes along. And it will, maybe not in our lifetime, something else will come along. But always know, humans, um, we have souls, and those souls are what connect us all, I think. Just be good to yourself and be good to others. And I'm always here if you need to be bad to somebody. You can call me and yell. It's okay. I'm good at it. I'm a good sounding board. But let other people be nice. Be nice. That's all. And now Jim's there we go. Off. See, there, there we go. go. There's technology <laughs> there. But um, you know, I want to thank all of you for listening, doing your part here. And we discussed some very, very important issues, you know, in Solano County and Fairfield. Um, but at the same time, they are things that really affect us both. This whole thing de de dealing with the virus is very serious. We want you to be safe clean your hands and wash your hands as much as you can. Also make sure you keep your distance from people. Wave if you don't need to hug and really just, um, just be really thoughtful of the people that are around you. There are a lot of things that uh, are happening right now and they create a lot more anxiety. And I like to tell people, I want you to use this time as a time of self-reflection. What does it say to you? Not good or bad, but just notice, are you one that is really thinking about other people like Catherine, you know? Are you one that maybe is thinking about yourself and your family? That's okay too, maybe just yourself. That actually is okay. But you know, what sort of, uh, what sort of uh, just legacy do you wanna live, you know? Cause here's a time you can really have a big impact on the people around you because people are looking for leadership. You know, we've talked about homelessness, which is so very key. I always say it's one thing to not help when you can't help. Is totally another when you choose not to help when you can. Just something to think about. But we really appreciate the time just with you, Catherine, and just what you're doing there in Fairfield as a councilwoman here. Any, any thoughts of going to the next level? Well, um, a lot of people ask about that. I would be really torn to um, leave, uh, physically leave my community. I may run for supervisor um, in the Board of Supervisors. That would be in two years or as mayor of this city. So those are my two uh, uh, many goals out there. Right now I'm helping us get through this. But out there, yes, that's right. Um, I will be stepping up. 
Mayor right. Moy has a really nice ring. Yeah, to yeah, Mayor Moy. Actually, M2, M2, Mayor yeah. Moy, Mayor Moy, and which also sounds like an Asian name, by the way, Moy. It does, yeah. <laughs> well, what, what sort of name is that background, by the way? You know, it um, actually, uh, I don't really know, but there are a lot of Chinese people who have the name Moy, the surname Moy, and my husband is not Asian. Um, and he, I think Northern European is where his family comes from. And I took his name. I'm actually Hispanic. My name was Perez, believe it or not. And, um, so I don't look like any of them. I just, you know, whatever. I'm all, I'm all mixed up. <laughs> you know, that's what I love. You know, we always have fun. Sometimes even amongst the Asian community, I take a look, I wonder if he's Korean or Japanese. Can I even tell our own type? <laughs> well, anyway, uh, we hope you had a good time here. Whether we have uh, a lot of power here, I know I it would have a little more lighting than the other gym there. Uh, this is still the power of gym. This is Jim T. Chong, the walk star, along with... Jim Meyer, Broker Associate at Remax Gold. Thank you, you guys, for being a part of the Power of Gin. And along with guest. Cat. Cat Moy. <laughs> Great. The Councilwoman. Councilwoman. <laughs> the mayor. <laughs> our next mayor. Here we go. Go, Mayor Moy. All right. <laughs> All right. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.